devour our own keystone species. And I'm here to tell you, if you go on the Garden Tours website, under the Doug Tallamy section, you'll see the plant lists where the red arrow is, and under there is that blue Excel. If you go to that Excel sheet, so when I heard Doug in uh, 2018, I went up to him afterward and said, so what are our keystone species? And he said, I'll email you my data. So this is his data. It's a literature search that someone did of the last 100 years of sightings in the scientific liter literature of butterflies and moths laying eggs on certain species of plants. So the green on the right is the number of butterflies and moths that can lay eggs on that uh, group of plants. So you can see the uh, oak is uh, near at the top. California lilac has 120 species. Um, so what I did then, you know, you can look up a number of plants and see what their value is to Lepidoptera. Uh, you can also go on the Garden Tours website, and our very own Jennifer Durking made these list of keystone species. Um, so what I did is I took Doug's data, and and he just, just he defines keystone species kind of generally. I said it's going to be 30 species of butterflies or moths can lay eggs in it or more. That's a keystone species. And then I looked at his list and uh, chose the species that were readily available in nurseries, are easy to grow, are commonly seen in gardens. And that's the list of keystone species that you'll find on our website. Jennifer has made these beautiful signs. They're in English. They're in Spanish. They're uh, downloadable for free. Uh, you might have seen them on the uh, garden tours table outside. You can purchase a set if you want to. Um, they can live outside all year long, and they've been being used by native plant nurseries. Pete Bayou has had them outside for a year now. Uh, landscape designers have bought them. Uh, some college teachers have bought them. So, all right, that's our keystone species. Mm -hmm.